This is Bewilderbeasts, an infotainment show dedicated to inspiring curiosity for all ages by investigating the ways animals intersect at humanity. I am not a historian, an ethologist, a researcher, a scientist, a zoologist, a trained audio engineer, or an expert in, well, anything. Y'all, I'm lucky if I can remember to put my clean laundry in the dryer before it gets funky. And while I make every effort to present things as accurately as I can with a fun flair, I'm going to mess up. And that's okay. I hope I've given you a nice place to jump off from on your own adventures into curiosity. Or at the very least, I've given you the key to win your next round of trivia. Hello and welcome to Bewilderbeasts. I'm your host, Melissa McCumrick-Rath, recording feet from our jerk cat, who still wouldn't let me in my closet to record. And today, let's go to Wales, where it's okay to look a gift horse in its freaky deaky skull milf. All right, let's go. Rap battling a horse skeleton to keep all your alcohol sounds exactly like Bewilderbeast holiday special to me. Or at least that's what I thought when I saw an image about a Welsh holiday tradition circulating on social media this week. So if that doesn't make you do a double take to your media player of choice, I don't know what else I can do. But before we get into that, there is a disclaimer right from the top. I am not Welsh. Welsh is a beautiful language that I do not have the tongue for. And there are so many consonants so many consonants. So I've looked at different podcasts and I've tried to pronounce some of these terms as best as I can based on the pronunciation from native speakers when possible. And I absolutely know I'm still going to butcher it. I'm trying. So y'all, if you're ready, let's get right into it. The Bewilderbeast Rap Battling Horse Skull Holiday Extravaganza. As stated in the intro, this is one of those things that I saw circulating on social with a giant image and thought, well, that can't possibly be real. That cannot be real. That can't be real. Oh my God, that's real. The image was a horse. Well, actually, in the immortal inspired words of Monty Python, an ex-horse, a horse that has ceased to live, a horse that was pining for the fjords. He's a dead horse, a skull to be specific, and the image had the following meme-like font and language. Quote, In the Welsh Christmas tradition of Mare Lloyd, a horse skull visits your house and sings rhymes outside your door. And it went on a Tumblr or Reddit thread. I only saw the screenshot. And that's not even the best part. The person inside the house needs to sing back. And if the horse skull ends up singing more verses than the people inside the house in a call and response thing, horse skull is allowed into the house to drink all the alcohol and eat all the food. (laughs) At least that's the broad meme-like strokes in this one image. But as we all know, dig deeper, dig deeper, dig deeper. So here we go. Y'all, this is wild. (laughs) So the name Mary Lloyd is generally thought of to mean gray mare in Welsh, but this may also, and this might be a stretch, might also be a misheard version of Merry Lude, meaning merry game in English, though some of what I'm going to describe might be more lewd in nature looking at it from today's eyes, we will get to it. But in modern Welsh, you may even hear it called Fairy Lloyd, and I'm going to do what the 90s taught me. There's something about Mary, and I'm going to stick with the older version if it's all the same to you. Okay, so what exactly or who exactly is Mary Lloyd? Well, on first, second, and third glances, it might seem more Halloweeny in nature. The Mary Lloyd is a horse skull, which is decorated with bells and decorations and ribbons and affixed to a pole. This pole is covered with a sheet, so the puppeteer of the and I can't stress this enough, the very merry holiday horse skull on a pole can be hidden, almost like um, like a ghost villain under a sheet in the old Scooby-Doo cartoons. I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those blasted kids. The Mary Lloyd also has reins that are frequently decorated with ribbons from the women in the town. 
And the Mary Lloyd, always a man dressed in this getup, by the way, was traditionally led through town by another man who was dressed up fairly well. And three to six other people. <coughs> Men. <coughs> we'll talk about the groupies in a minute. This group or troop would travel with the Mari Lloyd through the town. And they would present themselves to the doors of the townsfolk who would then lock the doors, lock the windows, and make sure no one could get in or out. This is actually starting to sound more like a Stephen King novel, right? Horse Skull Ghost Man bops up to your front door. His shoes are peeping out like Bojack Horseman, right? He knocks and then everyone locks everything. No one gets in, no one leaves, but anticipation builds and eventually the horse gets in. Eek! Eventually, the party of traditionally men would, quote, win this rap battle of sorts, gain entry, and this isn't great, would chase the kids and women around in the house. The Mari Lloyd would then snap its jaws as the leader would pretend to restrain the gray, jangling, ribboned man dressed as a mare skull. They'd cause havoc, perform a chaotic dance, while the merry men would just pretend nothing was happening and try to entertain the rest of the onlookers in the house with music as this whole scene unravels like a Benny Hill scene. Which would only get worse, I would imagine, with all the alcohol the performers were given inside the house. They would, according to Dr. Gwillem Morris Bard, almost certainly get roaring drunk and then go on their merry way. Their merry way ultimately, usually, led to a fight in the streets between two Mari Lloyds. So, drunk horse skull fights, or that some just ended up maybe sleeping in ditches, or went back home and woke up in some other guy's horse skull with no explanation at no, all. No, 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 no. So this party of men and a ghost horse skull, we don't party like we used to, I guess. There was usually a fancy pants leader at the reins, leading Mari Lloyd around the town to doors. Other stock characters in this troupe such as the Merry Men, as I described, they played music, and a Punch and Judy-like duo of characters, both played by men because, as we all know, pff, women can't possibly play a woman. That's terrible. But it gets worse, historically speaking. Aside from frightening children and chasing women, we have a true trifecta. Let's add some old-timey racism. <laughs> Now, in the annals of history, Punch and Judy shows were the OG slapstick where two puppets would just wail on each other and people would laugh. It was very Warner Brothers, like Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner-ish. However, there is a problematic history with Punch and Judy and other kinds of shows of the time. And what I could see in some of these photos of the Mary Lloyd groups, some characters dressed as Punch and Judy characters also featured blackface, which I hope I don't have to tell you is terrible and bad and not okay at all, where white actors paint their faces black or brown in order to exaggerate features to stereotype black people in harmful ways. No, 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 no. It's gross, it's disgusting, it's racist, it's not okay. History, go to bed, you're grounded. Okay. So why is this circulating on Facebook? I needed to understand why this is a good thing, because right now it's not sounding so great. So I went to go watch a video of this so I could better understand what was happening and appreciate maybe the cultural significance of the Mary Lloyd. And it looks like a mashup of Halloween caroling and letting a horse skull ghost man walk into your house. <laughs> Unfortunately, the first video I saw might not have been the most authentic. It was a man dressed as Mary Lloyd. She bells, horse skull in a pole, peeking out. So this guy knocks on the family's door, singing, bobbing his head all horse-like, but the man of the house, instead of like singing back and forth, just seemed like he kind of gave up. He just opened the door completely unperplexed and nonchalantly just walked back into his living room, leaving the door wide open for this horse skull ghost man to walk in. And here's where things took a turn. There was a young kid in this living room, maybe 15 months or so, and he looked up in absolute terror at this scene as it's starting to unfold. The horse guy just blurts out, you call this Christmas? And the parents are starting to preemptively soothe the kid who has the exact right idea. 
Y'all, this is nuts. What the absolute <laughs> is going on here, said 15-month-old baby's face. And then the video just abruptly stops. <laughs> so I decided this cannot possibly be right. So I went looking for a more authentic version. And if you were to take away the racist Punch and Judy and the very unfeminist chasing women through their own house and the bad look of intentionally scaring children with a snapping horse skull, all of the men sing and say, ha ha, boys will be boys, look at me, nothing to see here, while everyone gets a bit of ale and food, take away the weird and problematic bits that I just laid out. And take away the horse skull too and the ribbons and the Christmas ball eyes and what you have truly is wassailing. You know the song. Here we come, a wassailing among the leaves so green, right? The folklorist Awarev Pete believed that in recorded examples, one of the most ancient counties of Wales, Gamorgan, and the Mari Lloyd idea is indistinguishable from the practices of wassailing. Which, aside from the clanking horse skull, Pete theorized that the Mari Lloyd was a variant of a famous wassailing custom that was found all throughout Britain. Basically, it's caroling door to door and getting drunk. And given that this is a variant of the famous wassailing custom and it's 2021, between the show Loki on Disney Plus and the pandemic, we know all about variants. And this theoretically happens between Christmas and Twelfth Night, which I actually had to look up. It turns out it's not just a Shakespearean play. I thought Twelfth Night was like the 12th days of Christmas. Drummers drumming, birds chirping, swans swanning, you know the song. The 12 days leading up to the holiday. But instead, it's the 12 days after Christmas ending in January. But it's more like a New Year's tradition to hopefully bestow upon families and communities good fortune in the new year. See, the horse is supposed to sing outside your house. You let it in. It chases out all the bad luck for the last year, so you start the year fresh. This sounds a lot better, but the way that it was done still seems really problematic. But my guess is that given that it's one person in a horse ghost outfit and is given lots of food and lots of drink, they had to keep this party going for weeks through January. So the whole horse ghost guy didn't end up as a ghost himself from all the alcohol poisoning. So they had to keep this up for 12 days. Plus, in the dead of old-timey winter, what else were you going to do? It was likely best to keep the party going, go house to house for a month of celebration and warm beverages, as the nights are long and cold. This is an extremely old tradition. It's a call and response. Animal masks go all the way back to pagan times. All ancient customs that help the transition from season to season. But as best as we can figure out, horses equal fertility and strength, which might explain all of those September babies if Mary Lloyd were to just grace your presence in January. But why? <laughs> I mean, if you're in the traveling group, I guess you get lots of free food and beer, so that's not terrible for some folks. And you're spreading joy. You might be partaking in a tradition that brings you happiness. Some people just might really like to dress as a ghost while carrying a horse hat on a stick. Maybe an exchange of cash and good fortune. Maybe getting to sing rude songs to your neighbors in a cheeky way is really fun. And no matter what, the horse always ends up winning and gets to come in, and that's the point. Some think that the Mari Lloyd represented a death horse, a literal dead horse head, and that white sheet suggesting that it was originally employed in a pre-Christian ritual to mark the festival of Samhain. It's a Gaelic festival that marks the end of harvest and the start of winter or, quote, darker half of the year, which I am feeling right now when it gets dark at 4.30 p.m. Traditionally, the Samhain festival is held in October, on October 31st, a day I know is Halloween. And remember... I already made the connection at the beginning that if you weren't, if you were to just look at this whole shebang without any context, you would likely think that this is a weird take on the horse head mask costume at a Halloween party all over this great land. The idea that the Mari Lloyds started to lose favor in the late 1800s and 1900s because Methodist reverends and other Christian religious figures said, meh. Y'all will have this weird custom and we don't like it. 
chop down a tree, put a bunch of lights on it instead. Hope it doesn't burn down. Y'all are new to this, aren't you? Well, let's see. The Mary Lloyds started to lose favor in the later 1800s and early 1900s because the saying goes, the Methodist reverends and the other Christian religious figures said, meh, this custom's too weird. We don't like it. Tale as old as time. Instead, chop down a tree, put a bunch of lights on it, and bring it into your house. I hope it doesn't burn down because y'all are new to this and we don't have LED lights yet, so you have to use candles. Anywho, we see your skull horse and raise you bringing outdoor trees indoors to confuse dogs everywhere. Put lights and shiny things on it, and don't forget, this ties into Jesus. The Welsh likely asked, well, how is Jesus tied to glorified trees in the living room? And the Methodist said, uh, y'all are tying fertility to a dead horse skull. The Welsh? Good point. I mean, my favorite brain jitsu of this whole thing comes in 1852. A man named Reverend William Roberts, a Baptist minister who poo-pooed all over the Maury Lloyd, not for the blackface, not for chasing women around and scaring children, not for the one community that happened to rebury its skull every year, and unburied it every year to use as a Mary Lloyd, but condemned it for being, quote, a mixture of old pagan and popish ceremonies. I wish of this folly and other similar follies that they find no place anywhere apart from the Museum of the Historian and Antiquity. Basically, this was an old-timey slapdown saying, this is too pagan, this is too garish, I think that this only really belongs in a museum and in history. And for that, I say, y'all... Popish. It's an awfully rude derogatory term. But really, Reverend Roberts, stay in your own lane and leave the dancing horse skulls out of it. So while the broad suggestion of the Mary Lloyd faded because of Christianity and new cultural traditions, I would also like to point out that maybe, just maybe, women and children and people of color really were not having it, with six men rolling up begging to be fed get drunk on their alcohol, and put up with all of the shenanigans. Maybe Mari Lloyd just needed a break for like a hundred years or so and make better choices and come back better, right? So did the tradition of Mari Lloyd survive? In short, yes. Sort of. Mary Lloyds are appearing now more in local midwinter events, lantern festivals, and wassails. There are women who are singing about Mary Lloyds in these beautiful Welsh folksy songs, and it appears that things have been updated maybe a bit. Now, it's still a group of men outside of a home or a dwelling with mostly women. All right. A bantering occurs with this call and response, but instead of hours upon hours of playing hard to get, these activities might max out at 15 minutes, and everyone seems to be consenting. <laughs> Hooray. And instead of coming up with stuff off the top of your head, you can actually just print off some great verses from the internet and use that to sing out. Also, hooray, it's much easier. Though I'd honestly love to see Lin-Manuel Miranda do some rap battle style Mari Lloyd with the three sisters from Hamilton on the inside of the house throwing shade back at him. I would love to see a troop of Lady Maris going house to house, knocking on doors, and just flipping the script. But I have found some good progress on more of the problematic historical parts of the Mari Lloyd. So let's end on a good note. In 2014, a troop led by Gwyn Evans, age 76, brought a splash of color to the dark evenings of the dead of winter. He raised spirits and cash for charity. He ended up taking on the post of the Mari Lloyd after his father, Sinwid, had passed away. It's tradition. I want to carry on as long as I can, another 10 years or more, he said. Gwyn Evans and his friends travel to pubs and rugby clubs, places where the tone might be a little bit more amenable to a rowdy good time instead of women's houses and disrupting kids' bedtime because I'm sure that never backfired with nightmares. All of this was a tradition longstanding in the Lin Fai Valley, where the Mari Lloyd troupe was collecting money for charity. Not drinking everyone's alcohol stores, or and not fighting, and probably not beating up other Mary Lloyds, although I don't have confirmation. <laughs> and they weren't passing out in bushes, to my knowledge, on the way home. How much were they able to raise? 
At the time of the article, it was over 8,000 pounds. Equivalent to US dollars, that's $10,600. I think that this is a very hopeful ending that continues a tradition and does some really good things and no one gets hurt. Except, I mean, whatever happened to the horse, but let's not ask any more questions today. Okay, cheers. Okay, thank you for joining me today on Bewilderbees. If you want more of this, whatever it is, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash bewilderbeasts. Bonus episodes are for everyone at a dollar a month and extra goodies for those who support at a higher level. Y'all, I love doing this show and I love the holiday season and I hope that this makes you look at the holiday season through another culture and another perspective and also with the history You can see the problematic things, but you can also see how tradition can be important to culture. And it's really important to recognize the things that are problematic, but also like how to hold on to certain traditions as well and to make it fun. And y'all, if I could walk through town dressed as a ghost with a horse skull to bring people joy, sign me up. If there are topics that you would be interested in hearing about on the podcast, know of any historical animals who change the world, animals who help humans, or wacky traditional animals in the news, Send them in to bewilderbeespod at gmail.com. Tweet at bewilderedpod, bewilderbeespod on Facebook, and bewilderbees on Instagram. I'm Melissa McKee McGrath with Mutt Stuff Media. Now go get curious. I got today's information from YouTube, folkwales.org, whales.com, Dr. Gwillem Morris Byard on his YouTube channel as well, Whales Online, Atlas Obscura, and I think that's it. Links, as always, are in the description of today's episode. Intro music is Diptoe Out the Back by Dan Leibowitz. Interstitial music is by MK2. Additional music is provided by Pixabay and freesound.org. Don't forget to like and subscribe, review, and please, please, please share with your curious friends. Thank you so much for listening. Happy holidays, and I will see you next time. (laughs) 